Welcome back to the next video in unit one. As you can see today, we're going to talk about well binary addition, binary subtraction, and something called overflow. So if we look well binary addition, I mean, I think we've done a few examples of these, um, although of course, yeah, we're going to have more practice today. Uh, likewise, subtraction, you know, I think we did one example, uh, but of course, yeah, have more practice in this video. Right, then something called overflow. Um, so overflow, well, this is going to occur where basically, okay, well, okay, right, let's say we do a calculation or yeah, we do some arithmetic. And if the answer requires more bits than the number of bits we have available. So let's say, for example, I, I don't know, right, maybe we do a sum and our answer is going to require nine bits, right? But let's say, you know, uh, well, I guess, right, our register or yeah, our memory, right? If our memory only has eight bits, well, in that case, right, that's going to be overflow since again, right, our answer, uh, yeah, you, uh, I mean, basically what you can say, our answer is going to be too big or yeah, it's, it's going to require more bits, um, right, than the number of bits we have available, uh, you know, in our memory, right, in our register. Right, and then, actually, uh, okay, so actually, right, this fourth one is actually not required for A level, but uh, yeah, maybe it's just a nice extension. Um, so uh, I guess here, well, we're just going to see how we can actually, uh, yeah, I guess how we can kind of mitigate this problem or how we can, you know, work around this problem of overflow. Uh, because, of course, I mean, well, there are, there are going to be some uses where we actually do want to calculate, you know, huge numbers. Um, yeah, for example, like calculating pi to a billion digits. Uh, things like, uh, let's say, right, calculating the sort of biggest prime, uh, yeah, biggest prime numbers, right, things like that. Um, yeah, so, we'll, uh, well, again, okay, I mean, we'll just look at how we can actually create what's called an arbitrarily sized uh, integer. Or, yeah, kind of like infinitely sized, right, integer float. Um, yeah, just with kind of unlimited digits, effectively. Um, all right, so I, I guess well before looking at binary addition, I mean well let's first just you know, kind of recap how we can add denary numbers because uh, well as we see in a minute right it's going to be the same method. So for denary well we're just going to place each number in a row and also add a carry row above. So let's look at the uh, the first one then what's seventy five plus forty seven. So of course well I mean here we're, what we're, we're going to start on the rightmost column. Uh, so what we're going to do well five plus seven right that's going to be two or right, I mean it's going to be twelve. Um, but of course, yeah, I mean, what this column is going to be two, right? Then uh, then we're going to carry a one over like that. Uh, right, then if we have the next one, we'll say one plus seven plus four, uh, what well, that's going to be 12 again. So here, what we're going to have a two, all right, then we're going to carry the one. And if you think about what this is saying is, well, I mean, of, of course, like what it's saying, uh, yeah, all right, well, I get it. Let's, let's say this, right? So this is the ones column, right? This is the tens column. Uh, this is the one hundreds column. So if we just look at the first one, well, right, 5 plus 7, that's going to be 12. Right, therefore, we're saying, well, the answer is going to have, what, a 2 in the 1s column. Right, then it's going to have a 1 in the 10s column, because, of course, well, yeah, I mean, sort of 1, 10, right, and, well, 2 1s. Well, of course, right, that's going to give us our 12. Uh, li likewise, the next one, right, it's going to be, uh, well, I guess, yeah, 10, right, 70, 40. So that's going to be 120. Um, right, therefore, that's saying, well, we're going to have two 10s. And then, yeah, we're going to have, what, one that goes into the 100s, right, to, yeah, kind of make the 120. Um, right now, of course, I mean, well, the, the next one you can practice if you want. Although, to be honest, I think, you know, everyone should be familiar with this. Um, yeah, probably they've been doing this math since they were, like, you know, seven, eight years old. All right, so, actually, well, yeah, okay, so, like, as mentioned, then, we can use the same method with binary. Um, and the rules are, well, zero plus zero is going to be zero. Uh, right, okay, uh, and, and, and again, you know, like basically these are the same as denary. Uh, of course, well, 0 plus 1, right, that's just going to be 1. Um, here, well, 1 plus 1, right, uh, yeah, okay, 1 plus 1 is going to equal 0, right, but there's going to be a carry of 1. So this is kind of like if we do, well, 7 plus 3, right, we say, well, the sum is going to be 0, uh, but yeah, we're, we're then going to sort of carry a 1 into this column. Um, because, of course, well, in binary, what I mean, 1 plus 1 in binary is going to equal 2. Now, two in binary is just represented as what one zero. Uh, therefore, what we're saying is, I mean, well, of course, right, we're, we're kind of having a one. Uh, sorry, we're having a zero in this column, and then of course, yeah, in in the sort of column to the left, right, we're going to have a one, and of course, well, this is yeah, this is going to be the carry. Uh, right then, if we have well one plus one plus one, right, that's going to have a sum of one, all right, then also a carry of one, because if we think well one plus one plus one in binary, well, that's going to be three, and of course, well three in binary is just one one. Uh, therefore, we see yet yeah, a one in the sum column, right, and then yet yeah, a one, uh, well, yeah, kind of a one, right, in the carry column. Um, right, and something to note, well, of course, yeah, the properties are commutative, so, I mean, that's just a fancy word for saying, well, the order doesn't matter, like, one plus zero is going to equal zero plus one. Now, of course, I mean, for some operations, that's true, like, say, addition, multiplication, 
Um, but of course, well, let's say, you know, for subtraction, well, subtraction mean what, like zero minus one is gonna be different, right, than, you know, one minus zero. Um, so of course, I mean, yeah, th this is only true for addition. Uh, yeah, so, it, well, I, I guess, yeah, just another example, right? I mean, one plus one plus zero is, of course, the same as, well, zero plus, uh, zero plus one plus one. Um, and what that's going to be a well sum of zero, right? And then what a carry of one, right? In in the leftmost column, or yeah, in one well, again, not the leftmost column, uh, but yeah, just the sort of column one to the left, right? So you say well one plus one, yeah, that's equivalent to let's say three plus seven in denary, because well that's going to equal ten, and of course well I mean yeah, like mentioned right, that's going to be what a sum of zero, all right? Then a carry of one. Uh, whereas if we do well one plus one plus one, that's kind of like doing four plus seven. Because, well, of course, I mean, what, 4 plus 7, uh, we're going to get, what, a sum of 1, right, and then also a carry of 1, uh, yeah, which is what we see here, right, because obviously 3 in binary, yeah, sum is 1, carry is 1. Alright, so let's have a practice doing some of these then, uh, right, if we go here, right, so, well, 0 plus 1, uh, well, that's just going to be 1, alright, then 1 plus 1, alright, that's going to be 0, but then remember to carry the 1, alright, then, well, 1 plus 0 plus 0, okay, that's going to be 1, uh, and then here, well, 1 plus 0, alright, that's going to be 1. Now, what we can do, you know, we can actually check our answers really easily. Uh, and of course, we think, uh, and I think, right, hang, yeah, okay, so it's going to tell us it's unsigned. Um, so if we say, right, okay, well, this one is our eights column, right, this is our fours column, right, that's our two, that's our one. Um, so we say, well, this first one, well, that's an eight and a two, right, so of course, that's going to be ten. Right, this next one, what, a two and a one, right, that's going to be three. Now, if we check this, so what, eight plus four, right, that's twelve, uh, and then, yeah, twelve plus one, right, that's going to be thirteen. Um, so, of course, I mean, yeah, here we can see we've done this correctly. Right, now, now if we look at the next one, so what, 0 plus 0, 0, right, again, 0 plus 0. Uh, right, 0 plus 1, well, that's going to be 1, and then what, 1 plus 1, so that's going to be 0, and then carry the 1. Now, actually, where, okay, okay, when we get this, so here we have, well, 1, right, plus 0, plus 0. Um, so what we can actually do, well, we can write a 1 here, but since it says we only have 4 bits, then what they want us to do, you know, in the exam, right, they want us to put that in brackets um, to say, well, th I mean, th yeah, this is kind of, I mean, I, I, okay, like, I mean, it, it's kind of our answer, but, you know, since we only have four bits, I mean, it's not, yeah, I guess it's not kind of the answer that's, you know, stored in the computer. Because, um, again, of course, well, yeah, the, the answer that's stored in the computer is just going to be this, right, like, yeah, these four bits. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, this one is kind of just showing that, uh, well, yeah, of course, it's just shown that we've got to carry out basically. Um, and and again, like if you if you don't write that one in the exam, okay, so yeah, if, if you don't write this one, then they're actually going to sort of dock you one mark in the exam. All right, so yeah, I mean, well, of course, right, it's important to remember to write that. Um, right, so yeah, well, since we said these are four-bit binary integers and the answer requires five bits, uh, well, this is called overflow. And yeah, let, let's just have a look at this. So. Uh, again, well, of course, well, this is our 8, right, this is our 4, or this is, yeah, 2 and 1. So the first one, well, this is just 8, right, because, yeah, we only have that 1, 8. Uh, right, the next one, we'll hear, right, 8 and a 4, so, of course, that's going to be 12. Now, of course, well, this should equal 20. And actually, like, if we do look at this, right, so if we look at our, what, uh, yeah, our 1 here, well, of course, right, this one is going to be the 16's position. So, what, 16 plus 4. So, right, okay, like, if we have 5 bits then yeah, five bits, right, this would correctly equal 20. Um, but, you know, as mentioned, right, I mean, since we only have four bits, well, then the actual answer we're storing is just four. Um, because, well, as we can see, what well, we've got, what, zero here and eight. All right, then we have, what, one, four, and then, yeah, zero, two, uh, right, zero, ones. Uh, so, of course, yeah, j just, you know, this four. Um, so, yeah, okay, okay that's going to be why overflow has occurred, because, again, well, we can't correctly represent the real answer, right, with the number of bits available. Um, yeah, no, I suppose, well, here we've said this, right? So we said, well, the correct answer would be 20, right? Yet with four bits, right? Our answer is actually going to be four, all right? So, of course, it's going to be incorrect. All right, so here's actually a rule then. Uh, and, yeah, this is just, I think, taken from Stack Overflow, actually. Um, yeah, good definition I saw. Right, they say, well, if two two's complement numbers are added and they both have the same sign, <clears throat> uh, right, so either both positive or both negative, then overflow occurs, right, if and only if, the result has the opposite sign. Uh, right, so overflow never occurs when adding operands with different signs. 
So what that's saying is, well, I mean, if we have, well, let's say a plus, uh, let's say a positive number plus a positive number, right, and it equals a negative number, well, that's going to be, you know, when overflow has occurred. Right, likewise, if we have, what, a negative number and a negative number, right, if we add them, uh, and then if we get a positive number. So, of course, it's saying, what well, when the sign is the same, right, but, yeah, the answer is, uh, yeah, the answer is different. Um, so if, if, for example, we have, what, a plus and a minus, well, this one can actually never cause overflow. And yeah, I mean, I mean like, well, maybe you can realize why that's going to be. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, uh, okay, I think like that one we'll see in a minute. Right, so let's think then, can you think of examples to demonstrate this and try just using four bits? So try to think, for example, of, well, two positive numbers that you add, right, and it's, it's going to overflow to a negative. I well, likewise, yeah, try to think about two negatives that are going to add, right, to make a positive. Um, so I, I think, I mean, yeah, this, visualiz yeah uh, this visualization is quite helpful. Where, well, of course, I mean, these are the numbers, right, going around, well, yeah, obviously the positives. So let's say we're on seven, right, then if we do what, seven plus one, well, seven plus one, right, then it's going to go to minus eight. Uh, likewise, I don't know, well, let's say we have, well, minus one and then plus one. Uh, okay, well, I guess, yeah, I mean, okay, minus one plus one is going to be okay. Because, uh, of course, well, that's going to become zero, right, uh, since they've got different signs. Oh, uh, yeah, well, like negative one plus one, again, we've got, right, negative and then, well, positive. Um, but if, for example, we did, uh, okay, let's say, well, minus one and then, well, like minus eight, or, or yes, yeah, or minus one plus minus eight, um, well, that, that's going to go all the way back around here, right, and then that's going to end back on this minus seven. Um, yeah. So we said, well, if we have seven, and of course in binary, right, seven is going to be this. Well, if we actually add this, uh, yeah, okay, right, so well, if we add one, and of course, well, this is going to be one in binary, then what's going to happen? Well, it's going to overflow to become minus eight. And of course, well, I mean, yeah, of course you can try this, right? I mean, just do that addition. Uh, and well, the, yeah, we're just going to get a carry of one, a carry of one, carry of one, all right, carry of one. Uh, and then here we're going to have, well, all right, one, all right, plus zero, plus zero. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be a one in this final column, uh, which, it, which is going to get us this. Um, and, and again, of course, well, you can try that if you want. Right, so if we look at the first example, so, well, or the first part of the rule, uh, and this is where they both have the same sign, right, then overflow occurs if and only if the result has the opposite sign. So, right, let's say here then, uh, I guess, well, these ones are going to be signed. Uh, so what this is going to be, well, right, minus 8, uh, this is of course going to be 4, right? that's a 2 and that's a 1. So what here we've got, well, minus 8, right, plus minus 8. Now, of course, well, this should be minus 16. But if you see, what well, in 4 bits, you know, uh, well, of course, well, our answer has become 0. Right, then if we look at the next one, so... Uh, okay, so I, I actually, right, yeah, the, okay, so the next one's actually okay. Because uh, if we look at this, well, this is going to be minus 8, right? That's going to be, well, 4. So, yeah, this is minus 4, right? Yeah, this one is also minus 4. So, well, of course, right, minus 4 plus minus 4 is going to be minus 8. And if we actually look at this, uh, yeah, of course, this is correct. Um, so, of, of course, that's the thing, right? I mean, since, well, minus 4 right, plus minus 4, I mean, that's not going to make a negative number that's kind of, uh, well, negative enough, right, in order to overflow. Um, if in contrast we did what minus four plus minus five, well of course right that's going to go to minus nine, and minus nine we wouldn't be able to represent right using only four bits, um, because of course what the the negative numbers we can represent is going to be what from minus one right to minus eight right if we're just using, uh, yeah if we're just using four bits. Um, yeah so I, I guess here well just to kind of well reiterate uh, we say what well, the operands have the same sign. Uh, so yeah, the operands here, right, okay, well, they're both negative. Um, whereas here, the answer, well, was, yeah, so all zeros, uh, right, this answer here. Uh, this, of course, has a different sign, right, positive, uh, right, therefore, overflow occurred. Um, but yeah, if we look at this one, well, here, of course, what well, we have uh, two negatives, and then, right, our, yeah, if we look at our answer, well, our answer is also negative, right, therefore, overflow didn't occur. Uh, yeah, because we say, well, the operands and the answer right, all have the same sign. Um, right, okay, so yeah, I mean, well, all right, I mean, like, let's think then, why does this answer still work even with the carry out? Because you might think, well, because we have this carry out, I mean, like, even if it gives us, you know, negative, like, maybe it's going to be, you know, I don't know, sort of too negative or not negative enough, or right? it's going to give us the wrong value. 
um, you know, it's since they get again, or since we're just ignoring this. Now, if you remember well, in the previous video, we mentioned that for a negative one, uh, yeah, sorry, for negative numbers, then leading ones are redundant, right? For example, if you have this, well, of course, minus eight, well, this is equivalent, right, to this, uh, where, of course, what well, this one is going to be, what, minus 128, uh, yeah, plus 64, right, uh, plus 32, uh, plus 16, and then, yeah, plus eight. And I guess, you know, if, if, well, if you add all them together, right, that's going to be minus eight. So we just say that, uh, yeah, of course, while well, leading ones are going to be redundant for negative numbers. Um, likewise, of course, for positive numbers, right, leading zeros are also redundant. Right, then, if we look at this, uh, so the next part of the rule, they said, well, overflow never occurs when adding operands with different signs. Um, and if we think about this, well, this makes sense. And I think the easiest way is to kind of visualize with a number line. Since if we add numbers with opposite signs, the result will always get closer to zero. Uh, yeah, I, I guess, well, compared to the more extreme value. Um, yeah, all right. So, like, I mean, what, what that's saying, uh, well, let's look at the example. Um, right, so if, if we're just using four bits, right, this is going to be our number line. Now, with two's complement, right, the smallest number we can represent with four bits is going to be minus eight. Uh, what the biggest number we can represent is going to be seven. So let's just choose this one, for example. Uh, okay, right, so what, all right, I mean, obviously right here, if we're starting with seven then, uh, and of course, well, let's put a zero here in the middle. Or yeah, kind of, well, like, I mean, yeah, like kind of approximately the middle. Um, right, so well, of course, right, if we're adding minus one, well, that means, uh, you know, of course, our answer is just gonna go this way, right? It's, it's kind of going, well, it's gonna go towards the middle. Right, likewise, if we have, uh, let's say you got a negative number, and then of course, if we add a positive number to that, uh, well, again, likewise, you know, obviously our answer is going to go towards the middle. And I, I mean, like, of course, well, since, right, four, uh, yeah, since we're four bits, you know, we can only add up to seven. Like, we could never do, so, uh, I don't know, say, like, minus eight, you know, plus 25 or something. Um, like, yeah, of course, you know, we could never do something that's going to, uh, yeah, kind of go off the other, yeah, like, go off the other end. Um, since, again, of course, well, the biggest number that we can add is going to be seven, right? Um, you know, yeah, I suppose, uh, you know, of course, right, when we're just using four bits, um, so yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Right, and then, well, let's also think, I mean, does overflow also occur in denary? Now, uh, I mean, like, if you're talking about, yeah, okay, so like, if you're talking about on paper, then of course no, because, well, of course you can just, you know, always write more digits. But if someone said, you know, you're only allowed to represent your answer using, uh, I don't know, for example, three digits, um, yeah, then of course it is. Like, for, okay, let's say, yeah, if, I don't know, you have some calculation, right, like 999 plus one. Now, if if you are limited into only having three digits, well, then, of course, I mean, what's going to happen? Well it's, well, it's just going to represent, what, zero, zero, zero. Um, yeah, since, well, this one is just going to get ignored, right? We're, uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to have, let's say, the hardware to actually, you know, store that digit. Um, right, so let's think then, well, why can't we just use an infinite number of bits to prevent overflow? Since, I mean, I mean, this is of course what people are going to ask, you know, like, why can't we just use like five bits instead? Or why can't we use, yeah, six bits? Um, but I mean, I mean, probably you can realize, well, one, I mean, of, of course, you can always just add more and more, right? Like, uh, yeah, let's say, well, if you want to use 64, but right, that's not big enough. So I'm going to say, well, you know, then make it 65, right? But then, yeah, maybe 65 is not big enough. Right? Of course, then you say, well, you know, just make it 66. So, uh, of course, I mean, that, that's always going to go on, right? You're always going to say, well, you've got to make it right bigger, you know, bigger. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if we kind of sort of well, formalize that in a better way, uh, we say what the registers and also uh, kind of arithmetic circuits, right, e.g. in the ALU. Now, if you've done IG, I mean, you're probably familiar with this. Um, likewise, if you're sort of watching this as revision, right, you're probably familiar. Um, if not, I mean, I think the ALU, that's going to be, uh, yeah, may, I don't know, maybe like chapter three or four. Um, yeah, well, I, I, no, I think actually chapter five, to be honest. All right, so anyway, well, the ALU, right, is going to be the arithmetic and logic unit. So this is going to be the component inside the processor, what well, that's going to do the arithmetic. Um, and of course, when we say arithmetic, well, we're talking, uh, you know, sort of, well, numbers, right? So addition, subtraction, uh, right, multiplication, you know, division. Right, it's also going to do logic. So I think logic, right, that's chapter four. Um, so that's going to be things like, well, and, uh, yeah, of course, right, or, you know, X or, right, not. Um, yeah, like, okay, likewise, right, the GPU, that's also going to have a lot of uh, arithmetic circuits. Um, because if you think, well, that's got to calculate, uh, let's say, like, the pixel values, right, that's got to do, uh, yeah, all sort of, uh, kind of, yeah, matrix multiplications, right, things like that. 
Um, so any, anyway, like okay, so the key thing, while both of these circuits, are right, whether in the ALU, the GPU, or other places, well, of course, they're designed to work for a specific number of bits. And the bits that they're designed to work for, well, that's called the word size. And on a modern computer, well, that's going to be 64 bits. Um, I mean, probably people are, people are familiar with this, right? Sometimes when you download software, it will say, well, do you want to download the 32-bit version, uh, which, yeah, they, they also call, well, x86. Um, yeah, or do you want to download the 64-bit version? So, of course, yeah, most modern computers, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean like, really kind of all modern computers, right? They're going to be 64 bits. Um, now, technically, you could, of course, develop a computer with a greater word size, you know, let's say, I don't know, maybe 128. But the problem with this, well, I mean, then it's just going to get slower because, like, when you've got to execute instructions, well, I mean, I mean, you've got to, uh, you've got to, kind of got to process more data, right? You have to execute the instruction, uh, yeah, on more bits. Um, I mean, some instructions can be parallelized, like, let's say, for example, the NOT instruction. Uh, I mean, if, if you're not familiar with NOT, you know, don't worry. But basically, well, not it's just going to invert the bit. So, uh, okay, let's say a zero is going to become a one, or a one is going to become zero. It just, yeah, just flips them. Um, now, of course, I mean, this we can do in parallel, right, since they're not dependent on the, on kind of any of the other bits. Uh, like, of course, well, I mean, yeah, this can become a, a zero, right? This can become a one right, at the same time. Um, so in that case, if we have a word size of 128, well, I mean, I mean, basically, like, we're still going to be able to do it in the same time. But something like addition, now, of course, because if you think about addition, well, let's say, right, one, one, uh, I don't know, maybe zero, one. Now, we can't actually add this column, right, until we've added this column. And, of course, that's because there might be a carry, right, in this rightmost column. So, in this case, well, since, yes, well, since here, of course, there is a carry, um, yeah, that's why, well, first we have to do, uh, you know, obviously this column, right, then once we've done that column, right, then we have to do this column. Um, and, that, and that's why this simple kind of adder, well, it's actually called a ripple carry adder. Um, yeah, I mean, it, well, it's also called a full adder, but uh, I mean, the method is called ripple carry. Since what we're doing is, well, of course, right, we uh, we kind of calculate the first column, right? Then, well, if there's a carry, right, we obviously yeah move it to the next column, right? Then we calculate yeah the next column, right, the next column. Uh, so it, it just kind of you know ripples along right one by one. Um, yeah, although right, if we see well later, we will actually see how we can represent numbers right greater than the limit of well two to the power of sixty four minus one. Um, well, that's going to be using a custom implement uh, custom implementation in code. Uh, rather than only using the processor native, uh, uh, yeah, what well, native arithmetic, um, yeah, or arithmetic instructions. Right. So let's look at another example. Well, for signed numbers. Um, right. So here, I, I guess, what well, if it's signed? Of course, what well, this is going to be minus eight. So this first one is seven. Uh, right. What well, the the next one is one. Um, then of course we'll add these together. Well, this is where we get minus eight. Um, and of course, this is where what we got a positive number plus a positive number, right? And then yeah, the answer has now become negative. So if we look well, some uh, some program uh, some programming languages, right? C, C plus plus, right? Even database languages, or well, sorry, database implementations like MySQL. Um, so I guess well, MySQL, right? Uh, I mean, I mean, don't worry about this yet. But of course, right for later chapters, well, you call it uh, you call it a DBMS, right? Database management system. Right, they're going to allow you to choose whether numbers will be signed or unsigned. Now, in yeah, well, okay, I mean, well, let's say right in pseudocode, right? Also, well, Java, Python, um, and maybe VB. Like in all of those languages, uh, yeah, I, I guess you can't really choose. Um, I'm, I'm definitely the first three, right? VB, maybe you can, but yeah, uh, I, I guess well, the the other three, right? They're always going to be signed. I mean, you can't choose unsigned. Um, Right, so of course, well, as we see in this yeah previous example, well, of, of course, well the real answer, uh, well right yeah of course right well the real answer should be eight, but yeah since well of course since this is negative right it's going to be minus eight. Um, all right, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, if we just quickly look at Java, then well the following integer sizes are available, and actually I mean this is not required for AS, but yeah it's just a good kind of thought exercise. Right, so why do you think there's different sizes of integers, right, in different programming languages? So, uh, I mean, hopefully people can realize, well, of course, it's going to be to save memory space, or, yeah, save memory usage. Uh, for example, if we want to store data like a person's age, then we can use a smaller integer, right? I mean, we're, we're not going to need this long, right, to store a person's age. Um, while, of course, if we wanted to store, you know, the world's population, right, then, of course, well, we're going to need some larger, uh, yeah, some larger number. 
Um, so yeah, okay, well let's see then right, if people remember how we can actually calculate the size uh, of a maximum value of a signed number. Um, and then, yeah, I guess, well, with that in mind, right, what would then be the uh, kind of best, yeah, I, I guess, well, okay, let's say like the optimal one, uh, right, in terms of, you know, storing a person's age. So if you remember then, well, to calculate the maximum value of a signed number, uh, well, that's going to be, well, 2 to the power of, uh, yeah, 2 to the power of n minus 1, right, then minus 1 like this. So if we say 1 byte, well, right, of course, that's going to be 8. But since it's minus 1, we're saying, well, 2 to the power of 7 minus 1. Uh, 2 to the power of 7 is 128, right? Therefore, minus 1, oh, that's right, uh, okay, 127. Now, I, I mean, I don't know, like, may, maybe people know how old the oldest person is. Um, I think the oldest person is actually 122. So, to be honest, you know, 127 is probably not big enough. Um, since, yeah, I mean, it's probably likely that someone's actually going to, you know, exceed 127. Uh, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, maybe in the not too distant future. Um, so, probably we would say for age, you know, we would probably have to go to this one, since again, 127 is probably not going to be big enough. And if we look, well, 32,767, um, I mean, like, maybe in the distant future, you know, when he, uh, people have, like, become robots or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, probably in the immediate future, right? I mean, no one's going to live for this long. Um, right, so yeah, okay, like let's just try this in practice then. So if we actually run this code in Java, right, we're defining a byte which we're saying is 127, right, then we're just going to add one to it, right? Now, yeah, I, I guess, well, yeah, okay, so like what do you think is going to happen, right, if we just output this? So if we see, well, it's going to output minus 128, and of course that's going to be because of overflow. Um, and of course, well, in this case, if we want to fix this problem, well, yeah, of course, we can just choose right, one of these bigger data types or, yeah, one of these bigger integers. Um, right, so again, I mean, this is not really required for the exam, but if we just calculate, right, what would actually be the biggest, uh, yeah, let's say the biggest signed number that we could represent, right, using this. And of course, well, it's going to be the same calculation. Um, yeah, okay, okay, right, so the signed range, well, this is going to be the smallest number. Uh, then we say, well, the biggest number, what, well, 2 to the power of 63 minus 1. So the biggest number is actually going to be, well, this thing here, right? Then if we try to plus 1 to this, uh, well, then if you see what, again, that's going to overflow and go negative. Um, and, to, you know, to be honest, of course, well, I mean, this number is quite big. But if you're talking about, I don't know, yeah, like the number of atoms in the universe, uh, likewise, if you're doing some like physics or like mathematical calculations, um, I mean, yeah, probably this number is not going to be big enough. Right, and, and again, right, okay, this next part is not required for the exam, um, but if people want to know, I mean, it is actually possible to represent numbers you know, outside of this range, uh, right, well, either larger or smaller, because, uh, of course, we, uh, yeah, we're also going to say, well, this is the most negative, but maybe we want to make this, you know, sort of, yeah, like, make this 8 or 9 or something, right, if we want to go more negative. Um, and, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, as mentioned, right, some mathematical scientific encryption programs, right, might actually need to do this. Uh, if people are familiar with how encryption works, I mean, encryption, what is going to calculate two massive prime numbers. Um, you know, both of these numbers are going to have hundreds of digits, right? And then it's going to do, uh, yeah, some sort of like modulus. It's going to do various calculations on them. Um, so, yeah, of course, in this case, right? Uh, well, of course, yeah, we are going to need numbers with like hundreds of digits. Right, and the way this is going to work, I mean, basically the number is kind of like converted to, well, just a string, right? I mean, you can also call it an object, uh, right? Then there's going to be an algorithm to perform calculations in software. Uh, right, instead of kind of, well, yeah, yeah, I guess kind of instead of using the actual native, um, yeah, hardware, you know, like add instruction, for example. And if you think about this, I mean, like you can kind of just do this like how we've been doing, um, yeah, ourselves, where if we have, what, 7 plus 4, well, of course, th this is, yeah, say number 1, right, that's number 2. Uh, then, of course, what we say are results, uh, well, that's just going to be 1, and then, of course, just carry the 1. And, I mean, all you've got to do is you've just got to code up this logic. Um, which, to be honest, you know, is, is probably not that difficult. I think a lot of people could probably do that, um, yeah, in pseudocode as well. Um, right, so I, I guess in Python, well, numbers that can be stored in 64 bits are going to automatically be converted to objects, uh, which, of, of course, is going to allow us to actually, yeah, create bigger numbers, um, or, or, yeah, so, well, bigger numbers than the limit. Uh, whereas in Java, well, we have to create a class, uh, for example, like big integer. 
Um, and just to see how we can do that, well, of course, right here, we're just going to give it this value. And uh, notice here how we have it inside quotes because, yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of saying, well, this is like a string, right? It's not really, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not really viewed as a, as a sort of integer. Uh, right then, for example, if, if we just do this, right, to the power of 100, um, right, the result then is going to be an answer with, well, this many digits. And in contrast, the number of atoms in the universe right, only has 80 digits, uh, yeah, according to scientists' estimates. And I mean, I, th I think if you run this code, I mean, th this will run in, you know, just, uh, yeah, just like one millisecond, right? It's going to be super fast. Um, yeah, so, so as well, theoretically, right, big integer can store an infinite number of integers, um, right? In practice, there is a limit. And yeah, maybe you can figure out what that limit is going to be. Um, so, I mean, well, of course, right, the limit was well, just going to be how much, yeah, how much memory you have on your computer, right? So how much RAM, how much virtual memory. Um, so like if we have, well, 16 gigabytes of RAM, then, I mean, basically what we're going to be able to store a number with like billions of digits. Um, and, and again, of course, right in the exam, this is not required. Um, but yeah, it's just if people are curious, right, or if they have, uh, maybe they have the need to use it, right, for some, yeah, personal project or something. Um, so, for example, I mean, if you go online, you can easily find the code for this, you know, type in, uh, yeah, calculate code to 1 billion digits, or yeah, calculate pi to 1 billion digits code. Um, of course, yeah, I mean, you can easily find that online, right? I mean, probably even ChatGPT can also generate it for you. Uh, likewise, if you want to find code, you know, to sort of generate huge prime numbers. And the biggest currently is this. Now, yeah, I mean, maybe you'd be able to verify this or, yeah, I don't know, like maybe that's going to take way too long. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, again, right, it's kind of interesting, uh, yeah, just to see what it's going to be. Um, all right, so I think, yeah, if we just practice this again, right, I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I think I'm not going to do this, right? You can just pause the video and let's, yeah, have a look at the answers after that. Right, so, well, of course, right, the first one, what we're going to get, 1 plus 1, uh, that's going to be 0, right, carry the 1. Uh, here, 1 plus 1 plus 1, all right, that's going to be 1. Uh, and then, yeah, carry the 1, all right, 1 plus 0 plus 0, all right, that's going to be 1. And then we're here, uh, yeah, 0 plus 1, all right, that's just going to be 1. Right, then if we look at the next one, so what, 1 plus 0, uh, okay, sorry, 1 plus 1, right, that's 0, carry the 1, uh, right, 1, 0, 1, uh, that's 1, uh, okay, okay, sorry, right, yeah, that's 0, all right, carry the 1, uh, right, then 1, 0, 0, right, that's 1, and then, well, 1 plus 0, all right, that's going to be 1. Um, and, and again, of course, you know, I would recommend checking your answer so you think, uh, well, if this is signed, right, so, well, that's going to be, well, minus 8, uh, right, so what this one is going to be, uh, what, minus 7, uh, right, th well, this next one is going to be, what, 3, um, and then if we look at this, well, right, minus 8, uh, yeah, plus 4. All right, that's going to be negative 4. Uh, yeah, I think likewise, of course, you can check this first one. Um, yeah, and I suppose right here it's just saying, right, that's going to be the answers if we check them. Now, again, I'd say if you want to have a go at these, pause the video, all right, then try it, and then, yeah, unpause, and I'll show you the answers. Okay, so this first one, well, of course, right, 1 plus 0, right, that's 0. Uh, yeah, carry, all right, then, well, 0, all right, carry. Uh, yeah, 0, all right, carry. Uh, well, 1 plus 1 plus 0, again, right, the 0, yeah, carry. Uh, right then, well, 1 plus 1 plus 1, all right, that's 1. And again, also carry, uh, yeah, three ones, all right, so the sum is 1, right, carry is 1. Uh, right, 1 plus 0 plus 1, uh, that's going to be what, 0, and then carry the 1. And yeah, here, what well, that's going to be, uh, well, 1 plus 0 plus 0 is going to be 1. Um, and then if, if we notice, actually, since this is unsigned, then... Even though here, well, of course, right, this is zero, this is zero, but this is one. I mean, since it's unsigned, right, that doesn't actually matter. Because, of course, I mean, well, like, uh, yeah, of course, you know, this is still going to be positive. Um, and again, you know, probably check your answers. Uh, let's just see if that's correct. Um, yeah, okay. And, and, and again, you know, I'll say in the exam, well, just calculate what this is. So, well, that's going to be, uh, what, 32, right, 16, 48, uh, right, 8, what, 56, uh, I think 57. Um, and then, of course, well, yeah, calculate this one, all right, then, then, of course, yeah, just make sure your answer is correct. Right, then, let's, well, let's have a look at the next one, so, what well, that's going to be zero, right, one plus one, that's zero, carry the one, all right, three ones, well, sum of one, carry the one, all uh, right, two ones, so that's going to be what, uh, sum of, yeah, sum of zero, carry the one, uh, and then, well, just one, right, so that's going to be one, uh, right, then, uh, so, well, one plus one, right, that's going to be sum of zero, carry the one, all uh, right, here, it's going to be one, and then, what well, here, it's going to be one. Um, yeah, and now if we look, right, because this is signed, well, since these have a different sign, right, of course, well, this one is negative, this one is positive, then remember we said, well, this can never cause overflow. So hopefully if we've, if we've done that right, uh, yeah, okay, right, then, yeah, that should give us the correct answer. 
Um, and again, of course, you know, check your answers in the exam. Uh, all right, and then, yeah, I think there's well, so many examples here. So we see that a common misconception that a lot of students make is that well, if they see a carry out, uh, yeah, for example here, well, then they think that, yeah, the carry out means overflow. But remember, okay, the carry out and overflow, right, they're different things. Um, so if we see, right, well, even here, right, okay, there's a carry out, but there's not overflow. And the reason for that is because what we've got, we've got a negative number plus a negative number, right, and it's given us a negative answer. Uh, so of course, yeah, that, that's not going to be an overflow. Um, and I suppose if you calculate this, what you say, the first one is minus, all right, plus minus 16. Uh, well, that's going to be minus 17. Um, and of course, that, well, that's not going to overflow since we say, uh, what with eight bits, of course, well, we can represent, yeah, kind of, well, down to minus 128. Uh, therefore, of course, well, yeah, minus 17 is, you know, not going to be smaller than that. Whereas if we look at the second example, well, here, right, of course, what well, we have negative number, right, added with negative number, right, that's given us a positive answer. Um, so, of course, yeah, okay, th right, this second example would, you know, would be an overflow. Uh, but, yeah, this first answer, right, well, it's not going to have an overflow. All right, so I think, yeah, that's just the recap. Uh, overflow occurs when the number is too large or too small, right, i.e., well, too negative, yeah, to be represented in the number of bits available. Right, then as a result, the sign bit becomes incorrect. Right, now then, I, th I think the final thing, uh, if we look at binary subtraction, and, well, we've, we've actually looked at this briefly, because remember, we can say, well, 4 minus 3 is just the same as doing, well, 4 plus negative 3. And hopefully people remember how to convert from a positive number to a negative number. Uh, right, of course, well, 1 was going to be, what well, flip the bits, then add 1. Uh, another method, of course, is, well, well, yeah, I guess we can just kind of calculate it directly. Well, let's say well, if we're using, uh, I don't know, four bits, uh, then of course, well, to represent negative three, well, well, of course, right, we need the minus eight, right? Then we're gonna go, what, plus four, that gets us to negative four. Uh, right then, of course, if we just go plus one, right, that, that gets us to, yeah, negative three. Um, so, I mean, what, yeah, whatever way you do, uh, yeah, as long as you can actually kind of, uh, yeah, calculate or convert to negative correctly, right, then, yeah, that's gonna be fine. Um, and I guess likewise we can say, well, 4 minus negative 3 is just going to be the same as, what, 4 plus 3, because, of course, well, 2 negatives is going to make a positive. All right, hence we can say to perform binary subtraction, then we simply change the operation to addition and change the sign of the second operand, because, uh, all right, well, okay, let's say here, well, of course, well, this is positive 3, right, therefore, if we change the sign, so, right, change this to a plus, uh, and then, of course, yeah, we'll change uh, change the positive 3 to a minus 3. Um, likewise here, right, if we change this minus to a plus, uh, right, then if we change this sign uh, as well, yeah, change that to a plus, uh, and what, well, that's going to give us, right, the 4 plus 3 here. Right, so let's have a look at this then. So, right, let's see here then, if we want to do 4 minus 3, well, first we want to convert that to, well, 4 plus negative 3. Uh, so we say, well, 4 is going to be this. Uh, well, okay, 3 is going to be this, right, then if we convert that to negative. Um, so, yeah, let's say we're using the flip the bits and add 1 method. Uh, yeah, so I guess, well, I mean, flipping the bits is going to get us to this, right, then if we add the 1, right, that's going to give us, yeah, the 1 in the, uh, well, let, let's say the first bit position here. Um, and of course, when I say first, right, that, that's kind of starting from the right, okay, starting from the least significant bit. Right, so yeah, I guess, well, then that's going to give us this, which we see here, right, 4 and then negative 3. Uh, right, of course, well, then we can just add them. So, well, 0 plus 1, right, that's 1. Uh, yeah, 0, 0. Uh, right, so here, well, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. Um, and then here, right, that's that. And then I, I think for this one, we should also write the carry out. So let's just write the 1 there, and then, yeah, we'll just put that in brackets. Um, and if we check this, of course, well, this does actually work, right, because, well, 4, well, yeah, 4 plus negative 3. Uh, right, well, that's, that's just going to be 1, uh, which we see. Um, and, of course, right, that's the same as, like, yeah, 4 minus 3, right? That's just, uh, okay, hang on. Yeah, sorry, right, that, that's a 1, right, not a negative 1. Right, then, if we look at the next, uh, yeah, okay, right, so, right, I, I guess, yeah, if we look at the next one, well, 4 minus negative 3, um, then we can say, well, 4 again, right, then, well, minus 3 is this. Uh, of course, if we want to convert that to positive, well, 3 is just going to be this. So effectively, in this case, what well, our sum is just going to become well, 4 plus 3. Because, yeah, I mean, if we're kind of, well, minus, minus 3, right, that, that's just going to be plus 3. Um, and then, of course, well, if we if we do that, right, I mean, uh, well, of course, right, that's going to be, yeah, 1, 1, 1, and then, right, 0 there. Right, so, uh, I mean, yeah, probably that method is quite easy. Uh, again, just, yeah, sort of, well, change it to, uh, change it to, well, sort of, plusing a negative number. Um, 
but there is also another way to perform binary subtraction and it's similar to how you'd pr uh, probably perform denary subtraction. So let's just try with this example, for, uh, yeah, like what, uh, 1,364 and minus 289. Um, so probably what you'd do is you'd say, well, all right, so four minus nine, now four is too small, right? Therefore, what we need to do, well, uh, of course, yeah, we need to borrow one, right, from this kind of left column. So we say, well, this six, right, since we're gonna borrow 10, uh, right, this six will then become five. Uh, and yeah, then we're gonna put a 10 in this column. So then what we're gonna have, what is, is uh, I mean, like basically it's gonna be 14, right? So it's gonna be our 14, right, minus nine, right? And that's gonna give us the five. Uh, right then here, I guess, well, now we've got five minus eight. So, well, again, five is smaller than eight. Right? Therefore, what we need to do, well, uh, yeah, of course, we need to borrow one from this three. Um, so then what we're gonna do, well, we're gonna put 10 in this column. Uh, so what well, now we've got well, 15, or right, 15 minus eight, uh, which of course is gonna be seven. Right, two minus two, right, that's gonna be zero. Well, one, uh, yeah, I guess, well, one minus zero, right, that's just gonna be one. Now, let's think, right, if the second operand is smaller, or yeah, okay, so right, if, if the second operand is bigger, right, than the first operand, uh, yeah, if we're kind of like minusing a bigger number, then what we have to do, well, we need to switch the order, right, then add a minus sign in front. So effectively, right, we would just have to do this calculation, uh, and then of course, yeah, just make it negative at the end. And if you do that, I guess, well, three, five, seven, of course, well, seven minus six is one, right, five minus four is one, three minus two is one. Uh, yeah, then of course, remember, right, ju just to add this negative sign here as well. So yeah, that's gonna be what, minus 111. So for binary, we can say, well, zero minus zero is zero, probably what you'd expect, right? One minus uh, zero, that's one, right? Again, what you expect. Uh, right, one minus one, right, that's zero. But then if we have zero minus one, right, this is where the borrower is required. And of course, well, while we said that what addition is gonna be, uh, is it right, commutative? Uh, so of course, yeah, addition, well, commutative, right, where the order of operations doesn't matter. Uh, of course, well, for subtraction, it does, right? So of course, well, yeah, one minus zero, right, is different from zero minus one. Um, right, so if we look at this then, well, so here, well, one minus, uh, right, one minus one, right, that's just gonna be zero. Here, zero minus zero, that's also zero. But then here, well, zero minus one, Right here, then we have to borrow from this. Um, now, of course, when we said, well, base 10, we're gonna be borrowing 10. Okay, but here, since it's base two, well, right, of course, in this case, we're just gonna be borrowing two. And actually, in the exam, sometimes they just write that as well, one zero, because of course, we're in binary, you know, uh, yeah, well, I mean, one zero is just two. But I, I think for me, I'm just gonna write two, it's kind of easier for me to think about in that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, easier for me to think, you know, in denary numbers. Right, so of course, well, I mean, then we've just got, what, two minus one. So, well, two minus one is just gonna be one. And of course, remember that, well, when we borrow, of course, we also have to make this a zero now. Uh, so yeah, now what, just zero minus zero, okay, that's gonna be zero. And if you think about that, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess probably, I mean, like, okay, okay, so let's say for this question, right, maybe it's just gonna be unsigned. Um, so if it's unsigned, what, well, this is gonna be nine. Uh, yeah, this one was gonna be, what, uh, five. And yeah, now, now I say, well, nine minus five, right, that gives our answer of four. Um, yeah, and I think, well, here it's just kind of what we said. So in denary, of course, we borrow 10 of each place value uh, since the position on the left is 10 times more right, than the position on the right. Uh, right, of course, in binary, well, we borrow two since, of course, we say, uh, right, if we look at these values, well, we say, for example, of course, right, let's say this value, right, is two times bigger, you know, than this value. Right, yeah, that, that's, that's why we kind of, uh, well, uh, of course, like what it's saying is, well, right, two times four right, is of course just equal to, you know, one times eight effectively. Um, yeah, and then, well, so th right, this one here, I mean, that's just showing the calculation we've done already. All right, so let's have a practice with these, and yeah, we can assume that these are all unsigned binary numbers. So I'm just gonna write them kind of above, uh, yeah, just making sure to keep the columns, you know, lined up. Um, okay, so if we have a look at this one, right, so well, zero minus one, right, I mean, here, well, here we need to borrow immediately. So let's just write this, okay, this becomes a zero, right, but then this becomes a two. So now, well, two minus one is gonna be one. Right here again, well, we have, right, zero minus one, so we need to borrow, right, so this becomes a zero, this becomes a two, uh, right, two minus one, well, that's gonna be a one. Right, well, now we've got zero minus zero, that's zero, right, another zero minus zero. Uh, right, one minus zero, that's gonna be one, right, one minus one, right, that's zero. All right, here again, so what, well, there's gonna be another borrow. 
So right, this becomes zero, that becomes two, uh, and then of course while well, that becomes one, all right, then here well zero minus zero, right, that's going to be zero. Um, and yeah, okay, all right, so I think that's correct. Right, then if we look at the next one, so this one's actually going to be quite difficult, uh, except that yeah, there's going to be many borrows. So let's try and do it. Uh, right, and then yeah, I'll just write it from this side. Um, all right, so here then, uh, right, of course, well, yeah, if we're doing zero minus one, well, we, need, uh, we need to borrow. But the thing is, I mean, well, here, this is also zero, right? So then we need to borrow again, borrow again, borrow again. So what we're going to do, well, of, of course, yeah, we're going to have to go right all the way up to this one. Now, what we're then going to do, so, uh, yeah, we, we say, uh, hang right, okay, so, well, this is going to become a two, right? Of course, well, this can become a zero. Right, now what we need to do, well, uh, yeah, we need to borrow from this, right? So this is going to become a one. Uh, yeah, now this one becomes a two. Right, now we need to borrow here. So right, this becomes a one. Right, this one becomes a two. Uh, right, of course, yeah. Now we need to borrow here. Right, so that becomes a one. Right, this becomes a two. Uh, yeah, then of course, yeah. Well, this becomes a one. Right, this becomes a two. Uh, right, of course. Well, then we need to borrow here. So yeah, this becomes a one. Right, this becomes a two. Uh, and again, right, finally, right, one and then two here. Um, right, so now we can do two minus one. Right, so two minus one. Well, that's just going to be one. Right, then here we just got what one minus zero all the way up. So yeah, that's gonna be what one here, one here, uh, and then yeah, I, 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 okay, right. So right, hang, right, this was one, right? Then we changed it, uh, right? Then of course, well, just zero minus zero here. Now let's just think if this is correct because what we're saying is what uh, right? If it's unsigned, well, this is one hundred and twenty-eight, right? If it's unsigned, uh, this is of course one, right? Then if we look at this, well, yeah, this is going to be one hundred and twenty-seven. Because if you remember, we said that uh, if we have all of the bits to the right that are one, right, then it's going to be one less uh, than the sort of, yeah, I guess, you know, one less than this value here. Um, likewise, for example, if we have eight, right, so of course eight is this. Uh, but then if we have, well, these three are all ones, but yeah, this one is zero. Uh, we're saying, well, all of these to the right, okay, they're going to be one less, you know, than if we just had this on its own. Uh, so of course, yeah, eight and seven. Um, yeah, likewise, right, this is 128, right, therefore, right, this is 127. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully that made sense. Right, so I, I think, well, ju just the last practice, uh, and of course here, right, there's two methods. So either you can just, well, yeah, uh, kind of yeah, add a negative number. Um, so yeah, I mean, use that method, right, where if you say, uh, well, I, I say, well, it's, what, 75 minus 36. Of course, well, you can change that to be, what, 75, right, plus, uh, and of course, yeah, plus negative 36. Right, so either use that method, um, yeah, or just use well this method we've just seen here, um, right? Of course, yeah, to try and perform this addition, uh, and and yeah, I guess well likewise, right? Also try to perform this one. Right, so if if you pause the video and have a go, well, let's just see the answers then. So yeah, for this one, I mean, you should get this, and then right for the next one, well, yeah, you should just get this. Um, all right, guys. So I think yeah, that's been a super long video. Um, of course, I mean, hopefully that's good enough. You know, you've had a lot of practice. Uh, if you still want to have more practice, well, of course, just go online. Uh, yeah, type in, I don't know, like binary addition calculator, binary subtraction calculator. Uh, of course, yeah, you can just, you know, choose your own numbers. Um, and of course, well, make sure your answers are going to equal the same as, you know, the answer that they give on the calculator, right, that they, yeah, give on the website. Um, but anyway, I mean, yeah, hopefully this video is useful. And if you've got any questions, just ask in the comments, all right, and then see you again in the next video.